Okay, thank you for joining us here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center for the post-landing news conference for Space Shuttle Discovery's SCS-119 mission. Uh, we are here with uh, the crew of uh, Discovery, and uh, allow me to introduce the commander of Discovery's 119 mission, uh, Lee Archambault, and I'm going to turn the news conference over to you, sir. Okay, thank you. Well, it's great to be back. Uh, my name, is, again, is Lee Archambault. Uh, to my left is one of our mission specialists, John Phillips. Uh, to his left is our pilot, Tony Antonelli. Uh, in going in order, Joe Acaba, mission specialist, as well as uh, and on the very end, Steve Swanson. We had two other crew members return with us today, a long-duration crew member, Sandra Magnus, and she is back resting at the, at the crew quarters. And uh, our additional crew member, Ricky Arnold, was gracious enough to stay with her and provide her some mutual support back at the uh, crew quarters. And uh, so he stayed back just to keep, uh, keep her company. So with that, we're very, uh, very excited about our mission. It was a very successful mission. We had three great EVAs, installed the S6 truss. We brought the, uh, the full complement of power to the space station, and we were able to fortunately get a discovery back on the deck very uh, 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 nicely this afternoon. So we're very happy to be back here at the Kennedy Space Center. So with, uh, without, with that, let's turn it over to you for any questions. Okay, we'll uh, take your questions. Remember, uh, please wait for the microphone. Please state your name and news affiliation and who you'd like to answer your question. We'll start uh, with Marsha Dunn. Marcia Dunn, Associated Press, for whoever would know best. Um, what was Dr. Magnus's reaction when she was back on Earth? Was, and, and I know she's resting, but how is she really doing? Did she fare pretty well through the whole landing? She seemed to be in very good spirits. Of course, very excited, very happy with her uh, four-month mission. And, and when I saw her on the CTV, uh, doing extremely well for someone who'd been on space for four months. She was in, in very good spirits. Chocolate milkshake and a pizza and some sushi. Well, she didn't tell me. Did she tell any of you guys? She was. I, I was next to her on, on on entry and landing, and she was doing great. She was in wonderful spirits and really happy to be home. I don't remember the chocolate milkshake part. We were talking about it this morning, though, so I'm sure it's still close to the list of things to do. Okay, uh, Todd. Uh, Todd Halverson of Florida today for the commander. I was just wondering if you could uh, tell us about uh, the, the final uh, approach to the landing strip today, um, coming through uh, what looked like a little bit of uh, cloud coverage. And, and I was wondering uh, what that headwind felt like for you to come into. Well, you know, the, the space shuttle is, is very stable compared to our uh, shuttle training aircraft, which tends to get bounced around in, in a lot of turbulence. And today was the type of day that the shuttle training aircraft certainly was experiencing a lot of turbulence, but the uh, space shuttle is rock steady. Uh, we did have a little cloud coverage, but it provided uh, no impact whatsoever. It was just a scattered layer, and we uh, broke out of, the, out of the clouds with uh, more than enough time to acquire the runway uh, satisfactorily and, and land. Yes, there was a, long, uh, a, a very strong headwind, and it was a little bit gusty, but that just uh, resulted in a little bit different speed, speed brake setting. But overall, the shuttle was a very smooth uh, vehicle to fly and rock steady in, in, in all that turbulence. And just to follow for Tony, I'm wondering if you got the stick on the way around the hack and uh, what you thought about um, the handling characteristics of the uh, vehicle. If you did, I uh, I did get the stick for a little bit from uh, from Brew, and uh, he was uh, kind enough to give me the uh, maximum amount of time that our rules allow, and uh, and it was just uh, a blast to fly. Okay. Stephen Young with SpaceFlightNow.com. Um, for anyone who wants to take this, I wonder if you could maybe talk a little bit about the view you had when you departed from the space station and how the station looked um, compared to those artist impressions of 20 years ago when Tony, the concept uh, was first Tony came up. Tony backed away and flew that fly around, our pilot, Tony Antonelli. He, he, let's, he was looking at that, at that beautiful space station through the overhead window and, the, and uh, uh, through our COAS, and I'll let uh, Tony exp uh, expand more on that view. Yeah, I don't uh, like a lot of views from, uh, from space. Uh, I took you know, pictures and then look into the camera to see, you know, if I got the right focus and the exposure and how it looked and the pictures never uh, do the view justice. And it was the exact same for uh, backing away from the space station. It was just a, just an amazing view. And, you know, poor Swanee and Ricky had to uh, look at it through the lens of a camera because their jobs were to, uh, to take pictures. But luckily I, uh, I just had to look out the window and take it all in. It was, it was just fabulous. Because, uh, you know, 
I don't know if uh, the EVA, uh, two of our EVA crew members down here at the end of the table, Steve Swanson and, uh, and Joe Acaba, they did a lot of work on that truss out there. And this is, of course, balancing out the symmetry of the space station, but more importantly, bringing up that power. Uh, uh, it would be nice to hear uh, how they felt about that view, because that was really their handiwork, uh, in, in addition to John over here, who uh, robotically installed the, uh, the truss. So I, I, I just would, I'd be, love to hear the comments from everybody on this one, because this is really a sight to see. Well, for me, it was a job satisfaction. I mean, we worked uh, a long time uh, for training for this mission, and all the people on the ground also worked a long time processing and getting that hardware ready. And it was just wonderful to actually see it up there in place and working. That just uh, made me feel really nice and proud that I was part of it. Yes, I'd like to add, I was uh, inside doing the IV job while these guys were uh, outside working, and it was... Uh, kind of surreal to look out the window and you see your two buddies out there that you've been training with for a long time and to see them out there uh, turning bolts and getting the truss attached. So it was, uh, it was a special moment. Um, during the undock and fly round, I, I actually had not a particularly good view. I was looking through the laser range rider, which is like a police speed gun more or less. But we had some wonderful views in the last couple days we were on orbit, for example, from the Japanese laboratory um, of of our handiwork, or actually the Japanese lab laboratory is the other side, excuse me. But, um, but from certain other modules in the Russian segment we, we were able to see, and from the shuttle flight deck. And it was really awesome. I mean, the, the, the um, first off, they're spectacular looking arrays. They're blue on one side and gold on the other. And you see them in bright sun, and, and most of the station's white, and then you see the blue and the gold, and it's just extremely bright. And um, uh, it, it, it was kind of makes you humble to realize you're part of such a big operation that cost a lot of money and involved a lot of people in a lot of countries. Yeah, thanks. That's a, we enjoy an answering that question, as you can tell, so thanks for asking it. Hey. Hi, uh, Evan Brown, Fox News Radio. Uh, question of a similar vein. I believe someone had their first time up in space this time around, right? A couple of us. Couple of us. Um, what's different about your view on life in the world now that you've left the world for a bit? You're the eloquent one. Go ahead. <laughs> We're in trouble if I'm the eloquent yeah. one. Um, I was uh, – actually, Joe and I were just talking about this when we got back. This whole living in 1G thing is uh, is for the birds. Uh, the 0G, I think, is the way to go. Um, it uh, It's a blast. It's it's really uh, it's really the way to go. That wasn't very eloquent, but uh, – eloquent. <laughs> yes. Very wasn't eloquent, but we'll let Joe. Uh, it's uh, – you know, of course, we're real busy on the mission, um, but as you're getting ready to come home and we're on the shuttle and we've got to undock, you have a lot more time to look out the window and really uh, take in the earth. And so we had uh, some moments we can get in the, uh, on the flight deck there and look out the window, turn the lights down, and just really enjoy the view. And it's, it's just incredible, whether it be the sun coming up, uh, the sun setting, looking at cities at night, watching the lightning flash. It was just a, it was a, it's an awesome view. And Definitely you'll look at things different now that we're back on the ground. Okay. Um, if I get one other question. Um, uh, we've uh, noticed a lot in this mission uh, some problems with uh, space junk, debris. At one point we had to move the station shuttle stack, or not we, you guys, had to move the station shuttle stack uh, out of the way. Um, any concerns, uh, fears? Uh, was this expected, unexpected? Um, what goes through your head when you notice you have to do something like that? No concerns. Was it expected? I no, I, I wasn't. I wasn't told about it. But but uh, we do. But our we have our, we we track a lot of stuff in, in space. And and really to avoid something, uh, some space debris, is really from our perspective a non-event. It, it takes so little to change our trajectory by just a slight amount that it's it's a non-event. It has zero impact on our mission and is really is of no concern. To anybody, to anyone on the crew. Uh, my name is Makoto Mitsui from Japanese newspaper Yomiuri Shinbun. Uh, this question goes to Mr. Phillips. I was told that Koichi Wakata uh, has an excellent skill of robotic arms. Uh, in your opinion, what is the specific point that you feel he has a good skill? I would say um, this. I would say it's, it's something that's important.